first call you made, you know, were you excited to come home? Uh, yeah, I was. I mean, I, I always, you know, dreamed about playing for the Pistons just because where I grew up. I mean, I was at the Boys and Girls Club a lot and see a lot, we would get a lot of Pistons gear and I remember when Chauncey and Ben and Tayshawn and Rip came down when I was like, it was like 2000, like three, I believe. I was like eight years old, just running around at Boys and Girls Club. So I know what it feel like to be a Piston. I used to watch the games in the nosebleeds at the Palace. So, I mean, that pride of just being a Piston, I know what it feel like. So when I got the call that I got traded, I was actually landed in DC um, to check on my house there. And uh, my age was like, you going home? And I was like, what you mean? And he's like, oh, you, you just got traded to the Pistons. So it was a real moment, but you know, it's reality and I'm, I'm excited. I know you've done a lot of different camps. Yeah. You know, events all around the country, but to do it here in the inner city, mm -hmm. in the real Flint, you know, so to speak. Now I feel this touch base with these kids. It feel great. Um, I feel like, you know, we long overdue, but you know, it's a marathon, you know, not a sprint. And um, I'm just happy we could start it off and kick it off like this. And there's plenty more to come. Um, I'm just blessed to be in this opportunity. Um, it's a young kid from Flint and just being successful and winning Mr. Basketball 10 years ago. And now 10 years later, I'm a Detroit Piston. Like, it just, it's just surreal to me, for sure. The talent yeah. and everything just seems amazing. You come yeah. down here, unveiling this great basketball club in the city of Flint. Then you get your trade to the Pistons. And now you got your feature camp coming up in a mm -hmm. week. Just like the timing of everything just seems so special. Just like, how's it feel just like now that you're a Piston, you're giving back to the city of Flint in such a good way? Yeah, I mean, um, I'm always, you know, big on giving back. You know, as I've gotten older, um, this the youth, this right here is what matters, you know. Um, because when I was younger, you know, Mateen and Charlie and Mo Pete and those guys, they was doing that. And, uh, you know, you couldn't wait to go to their camps, you know, at Northwestern and stuff like that. So I feel like it's my turn to step into that role, and uh, I'm ready to do it. Monty, I heard uh, when you first got traded, you know, and they were telling you about, you know, the Pistons and everything. You heard about the fifth of day. Yeah. Why do you feel like it was important for you to be like, this is your camp, yeah. But why do you feel like it's important here to show your support to be here today? I mean, for one, you know, this is my city, you know. Secondly, you know, I'm a Detroit Piston, and anything I can do to impact impact the youth and impact the community, man, the community need this, you know, and um, we're going to keep doing more like this to bring the community together and, and just shine light on it. You know, we get a lot of negative publicity a lot, so, you know, it's on me, and I'm going to take pride on it all year to just do stuff to do around here and uh, just get that juju back going around here. And uh, it's easier now to do it that I'm actually 45 minutes, you know, away, and I'm right here. What was your initial yeah. reaction to seeing the design? Uh, it was big time. I actually saw a sneak peek of it on Twitter, but actually see it here, like, the kids, like, to be able to come here, we got nets up here, man, and beautiful net uh, court, like, you kids will love to see this, you know, all over the world, you know, not just here, so it's big time. Go ahead. Could you talk a little bit more about your role in this park and what your hopes for it? Say it again? A little bit more about your role in this park so okay. far and your hopes for it for the future. Yeah, I mean, I hope we can, we can open up and, and re, redo a lot, a lot of other courts as well. Um, you know, like I said, it's just a, a, a jump start for me. Um, first time, you know, doing something like this, especially in the community. So, I mean, just to see this turn out like this is, is big time for me. Has Tom Swerke inspired you at all? Yeah, I mean, none of this wouldn't be possible, you know, without without Tom's work. Um, you know, he's done a lot, a lot, an incredible job. And uh, he's really diving into this community, and I respect that, because um, we need it. You know, it's a lot of a lot of stuff. I mean, you can look around, it ain't the best the best place to be, but this would groom me and this how I got chip on my shoulder to make it out and be successful. So none of this is possible, you know, without Tom. So I always, you know, take my hat off to him and um, got a big respect level for what, you know, he does for, you know, everybody. What are your initial impressions of just Detroit's roster? Obviously a, yeah. a, a young team, kind of, mm -hmm. what's your impression of these guys? Uh, young, athletic, man. That's, and they, you know, they want to they wanna learn, we want to win. Um, and, you know, talk with Monty and Troy. Um, it's not like the, we don't want this to be a pit stop for me. We want to actually get after it 
and try to win games. You know, we ain't trying to say we rebuilding, you know, and um, that's why we shift the roster how we how we have and um, great young guys. K looking amazing. Um, he's looking real well. It's moving well. And then you got the young guys, Wiseman, JD, Ivy. So me coming in, just being that vet presence, I feel like, you know, I can shoot the ball. I ain't got to be on the ball all the time. So I'll be able to play off the ball too alongside K, kind of like the Jamal Murray role when me and him was in the backcourt together. So whatever situation, you know, they want me to play. I've seen it all. I done played third, fourth option, second option, all that. So I'm just a hooper, bro. I don't really yeah. care. Yeah. How, how, how special was it for you this past season to play alongside yeah. Kyle Kuzma and to see him blossom yeah. into the player? We, we all knew he yeah. had this in him. Yeah, I mean, see, Kuz, Kuz is a guy who he going to tell you, don't worry about me, I'm going to get mine. That's that's just his mindset. You know, he he worked hard. He believed in his craft. He believed in his game. You know, a lot of guys, you know, whine and do this type thing. He's not that guy. So for him to get what he got, signing a new contract, it was it's way beyond, like, anything for me to be like, uh, he don't deserve it. Like, man, that kid worked hard, 6 in the morning, shooting at 8, practice at 10, all that. Like, he's a hard worker, and he deserves every penny he got. Mark, we've seen you hanging around summer league practices. Yeah. And uh, what do you think your first impression of a star time to the market? Yeah, he, he's big time. Uh, that kid going to be special. Like, that's all I can really say. He listens. Like, if you get to this level, and you've been successful so long, you're going to hit bumps in a row. You know, my goal is to just let him know, just like, you special. Just you going to make mistakes. You're young. But when guys listen, that's the biggest trait I could take away from young guys. Because if you don't listen, then it's going to be tough. But he's all eyes you know, all, and all ears. He's listening great. Hey man, sometimes when people come home, yeah. Like, you know, we play yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> people come home, they can look at it as, say, a distraction. But for yeah. you, in your case, yeah. at this point in your career, yeah. do you feel like you know it kind of renews your passion for the game a little bit at all, being back in the No, nah, not really renew my passion for the game, but. I just, I, I love pressure and I love that hometown kid drive. Like, I can't wait to be in Little Caesars Arena and hit big shots. And I see all these people supporting me from, they see me when I was 15, 16, 17. So I love pressure. Like, I thrive better in pressure. But that's why I feel like if I can, like, go there and do what I'm supposed to do, for me, it's, it's contract year two. It's all. It's locked in, you know what I'm saying? I got I got bigger and bigger plans I gotta do. I love my life right now, so I can't <laughs> I can't let this slip up. So I'm gonna be locked in for sure. What's the what's the story behind the uh, the Beecher Bugs tattoo? Oh yeah, so down here I got Beecher, my logo, then I got Iowa State to the NBA. I got uh, hard work and dedication, downtown Flint, um, UP, the Mick. 810 Flint area code. So it's just a symbol with, if you ever want to just know my journey, you could just kind of see it right there. Um, yeah, and that's just how, that's how it is. Is it, is it new at all? Or? Yeah, I got it probably like a month ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. Congrats. How much were you able to follow uh, Beecher season this year, and how cool was it to see them bring home another championship? I mean, it ain't hard to not follow it. They got, they record every game now. You could just click a link. I wish my games was like that. <laughs> You know, so I always follow Beecher. I'm happy for, you know, Marquise um, to get his championship, Marquise Gray. Um, I will always go to Michigan State and watch him when I was young as well. So for him to be able to get the head coach and then bring a title back to Beecher, I know that made him feel good, but it also made the community, you know, get behind him and show support. Can you talk a little bit about Coach Williams at Beecher? Yeah, yeah man, Coach Williams. I'm still mad about him wanting me to take my earrings out in practice, but <laughs> but nah, Coach Williams, man, he he's a guy who I always I always call, just not even talk about basketball. It's more so just about life. Um, we built a crazy chemistry from my freshman year to senior year. He always believed in me, you know. At times he would say some crazy stuff, and I'm like, do you even believe that? Like about me, you know? And I he like, you gonna be good, you gonna be good, but. At the time, I was 5'8", 125 pounds, more in a size 13, clumsy. I ain't believe it. But everything he said definitely came on the horizon. And I salute him. And, uh, you know, he's a great father. They got a great family. So um, he's always going to be one of my, my, good, my good friends. Yeah.